Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek TV at BGGCon 2015. I'm sitting down with Randy Rathart, and you have brought us a quick demo of King's Abbey, which is not quite out yet. It'll be out uh, probably in a couple months. It'll hit stores. All yep. right. Well, I'm really excited that we get a little sneak peek dem demo here of what we're uh, going to expect. So what are yes. we trying to accomplish in King's Abbey? Well, in King's Abbey, you uh, the backstory is there's a king that has uh, an idea to get out of the Dark Ages. And so that is to build a grand abbey. And so each player, it plays up to five players. So every player has their own player board, which represents an abbey. You have and one player board out here for a, right, a sample. One player board for a sample. Um, and so each player is playing on their own, a lot like maybe Agricola, Stone Age, those kind of games. So it is a worker placement resource management game where your workers are dice, and these represent monks. And so the king has hired monks and architects to finish the abbey. And so the main mechanic of the game it are your dice, and you get nine dice at the beginning of the game. You roll your dice, and there's different phases in the game, which is really nice that you go through 12 phases, seven rounds. It seems like a lot of phases, but some of the phases are just roll your dice, draw the event card, keeps you on track. Um, and so you'll roll your dice, and then there'll be an event card. It could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. So there's disasters, and there's uh, year of plenties, which are good. Then there's Vikings that come out. And the neat thing about the Vikings is what I've incorporated in the game, because some games can be very campy of this style. Um, with this game, the corporate or the co-op type of um, play is everyone has to fight the Vikings at once. And so there is a screw you mechanism in there, but you know you all are trying to fight the Vikings so they don't burn down your buildings. And then there are other disaster cards that may come up in the event deck like um, forest fire so you cannot produce lumber that round um, now the great thing about this game is I've included 12 disasters 12 year of plenty and so you only include two of each of those for each game so it'll play different every time and so then you go and after the disaster year of plenty you'll start placing your dice in your abbey dice represent uh, one through three you can bring peasants into your abbey Peasants are good for collecting income, but also the peasants, you have to get forward to the altar, get them baptized, and then you can place them in your buildings to work. Um, so the point structure is this, that you have to build towers, which everyone gets six towers at the beginning of the game, and these help you with your defense. Um, and so the, the workers will go into your towers to give you bonuses. And so your points come from your towers, your points come from your buildings, and your crusades. And so at the beginning of the round, all of the players must place their dice very appropriately because you've got to save some of your dice to go out and gather resources. So one through three will bring peasants into your abbey. Fours, fives, and sixes will increase your clergy training. And so basically all that means is you're moving your cross up to the top of each one of these columns. And as you get to the top, you get a bonus. You might get more defense for your abbey, you might get resources, and so on. Um, and then you also have crusades, so every uh, person starts with a crusade at the beginning of the round, and then you can buy crusades later on and keep crusades going. Crusades are great because you get big points for crusades. Um, the crusade part is really easy. You'll start off with one die out here. Can you see that? Is that okay? Um, you can start off with one die, and then you got to send a peasant out on the crusade as well. Once you start off with one die, you've got to match that die here on out. And so say I, I went two fours, now I've got to have three more fours to complete this. And I'm going to get a Holy Grail, which will help me further in the game. It's a bonus. I can get sand, and I'll have eight points. Now, what will happen is when you put your dice out here, say I only have three fours, I don't have any more fours, once this round is over, those dice stay out there. Those monks are out crusading, the peasant stays out there, and the neat the other co-op part of this game is you can ask for help. And you say, hey, I see you have a couple fours over there. Can you send some monks over, help me out, send a peasant, and we'll split the reward. So you can do that, um, and then it, that'll help you get the crusades. Those are, and then what happens at the end of the round, if you finish a crusade, you can flip the card over. The point structure is there for the end of the game. So you might think you're winning, but you might have a stack of crusades that will get your score up there. Okay, so that's what you're doing here. Now, once you finish placing your dice here, those are locked in, and then you go out and you'll gather resources and you'll buy buildings. And so 
over here in the market, you can buy buildings here, and I'll bring a building over. Uh, like there's a kale factory, and this gives you big points, but you purchase buildings by um, using coins to purchase a lot of the same thing that you'll see in other games, you know, one, two, three, and four. And those are the things you're going to fuel back here on your right. personal you're, board. You're kind of getting a little engine going here, and the game will play very differently each time because there's a buddy of mine that loves to play with the brewery. Um, the brewery gives you more points for your working peasants, but what happens is um, there's 18 different buildings in the game, three of each building, so that brewery may never come up during the game. And so your strategy has to change what kind of buildings that you build here and then what other people are doing and, of course, the crusades that come up. Now, I, I know a couple people will ask, because we were talking about this a little bit before, that the version we have in front of us is the Kickstarter version. It's the version. Kickstarter version. Um, and so what you see here, you'll get in the main uh, version, the printed version, uh, maybe less a couple of things like this this guy here was a Kickstarter component and that's just to mark the de the darkness now I will say the darkness here real quick um, you're competing against the darkness the darkness represents famine plague raiders attacking and you've got to keep your defense of your abbey equal to the darkness and the darkness gets greater every round and so it'll play for seven rounds and so each round this will go up and you got to make sure your defense of your abbey stays the same or you lose peasants and you lose points okay um, and so this darkness tracker will probably be a little disc won't change the game at all um, this nice wood token for marking your defense may change to a cardboard token um, this is probably going to stay in the game this is the start player token because you have to actually go out during the resource gathering phase um, take initiative in order to be the start player and so you could be the star player for the whole game if you want to. Um, uh, how do you think a full game would take us? How long? Well, I played with four players uh, yesterday, and they were all players that seemed to, and they were brand new to the game, but they seemed to know the, this kind of game. And it took us an hour and a half. Um, but we did play the quick play version, which is nice. Um, what I've included in the game is um, quick play rules, which I recommend every player playing the quick play rules first and what it does is it shortens the time um, it kind of gives you a bonus in your abbey and your darkness your defense is at three so you have some time to build up um, so the quick play will shorten the game but I usually say about 35 to 40 minutes per player um, depending on if you have that player that likes to take five minutes per round on deciding you know you always have that well, and I noticed he looks like you had some solo rules in there as well yes uh, on the other side I have included solo rules which the game plays uh, it really plays good one to five, um, but you know three to four is a really good. But solo, it really plays well. Now, a lot of people say, well, the solo thing, you know, beat your last score, and you can do that. But I've also included some missions. So, in search of the Holy Grail, the farmer, the mason. So you're you're focusing on certain aspects when you're playing the solo game. Um, I've also included um, cards that have all of the buildings, so you can pass this around and figure out what building you want to build each round. And so it will play um, different every time you play. That's what I like about this game. You know, if you have a strategy to go for, it may not be the same the next time you play it. But. Well, Randy, I really appreciate you uh, taking a couple minutes out of the, your convention schedule here to give us a quick peek at King's Abbey. Yeah, be looking for it. It should be hitting stores real soon. So, Thank you so much. Thank you, Beth.